Welcome to a Fallout 4 episode. I'm here at the iconic Diamond City in downtown Boston. It is my most favorite location in the entire game. I love the design. I love the claustrophobic little uh, marketplace and shops and just the vivid colors. It's uh, one of the best designs in the entire game. We are here to do best of three, a quest for a very rare weapon. So let's travel to the glowing sea to investigate a distress signal just outside of Somerville Place. Somerville Place was one of my first settlements and it's right at the edge, as I said, of the Glowing Sea. And I remember this place quite distinctly because it was a father and his two According children. And I neglected to come and help them uh, defend sense. the farm the and they left and they have never returned. Little things like back. that make a game interesting, just like losing a named settler you're not there in time and they die and they never come back. So it's, it's a really nice touch that the game had. And I don't know if we're looking for a briefcase or there's the body. Well, that was easy. Okay, investigate the distress signal, search the gunner for evidence of what happened. And he is carrying a holotape. We'll be taking that. Instructions for Crane. Crane. Against my protestation, Sarge wanted me to give you a copy of the newest back door for the Pip-Boys. Instead of going through the current OS, it accesses a lower level of code within the device. Once it does that, something quite interesting happens. Uh, I'm wasting my time. All you need to do is pull the plug from the back of the Pip-Boy, carefully this time. Then simply insert it into any Pip-Boy provided the plug is removed and the backdoor program should do the trick automatically. Once inside, you can pull data from any Pip-Boy you find, coordinates, logs, you name it. Sarge is hoping that if we find any vault dwellers in the field, we'll be able to locate more vaults through their Pip-Boys. You know what that means. Aw, oh, hell, knowing you, you'll probably end up leading the vault dwellers to us rather than the other way around. Okay, let's take a look at the Pip-Boy hack, I suppose. Push Y on the Xbox. Download Pip-Boy data. Okay, let's go down to 211087 since everything else looks corrupted. Holy crap, where to start? I'm just glad I have this thing to write it all down. We've been locked down in this vault for weeks now. I've been bored as hell and the games on this thing got old. Fast. It was fun putting notes saying kick me on Coroni's back for a while, but the next thing you know, Brass says there's a paper shortage. Also, it's not exactly easy playing a prank on someone who spends all their time in their room. Me and the boys were trying to reprogram the Assaultron to give him a wedgie, but yeah, less said about that, the better. It was then that I remembered Lazansky telling me that he reprogrammed our Pip-Boys for Sarge so we can better track our guys on glowing sea missions. Well, the joke's on you, Lazansky. I found a way to better use for your stupid program. I got a few of the squad together and managed to break into the kitchen to take the weak old Meyerlurk soup that had been smelling out of the canteen for days. Then we hoisted it by rope over the atrium. After that, all we had to do was watch Caroni walk down the hallway to get his dinner after everyone else had gone to bed. God, I can't even describe my anticipation watching the little Coroni blip move along my Pip-Boy screen. By the time the blip appeared in the atrium, I lifted my head and there he was, completely unaware that he was going to smell like a dead Myrlurk in the sun. I told Jones to pull and the next thing you know, the goop came falling on his head. 
His face was an effing picture. I swear he was about to cry. Haven't seen him since, and to think Sarge wanted us to use these things to track us for the mission tomorrow. Okay, let's see where we need to go next. Looks like we are heading to the glowing sea. And I think it's time for a little bit of radiation aid. Let's take a rad X and rad away and get going. Okay, let's head over to Hope's March Church in the glowing sea. Make sure we are at maximum health and we consumed our Radex. I remember coming here when I first started playing the game. I didn't last long. It's very tough to find a hazmat suit in this game. Whoops, we've got some friends to take care of first. Lots of friends. And we have a Vault 95 gunner, and we can download more data from their Pip-Boy. So let's have a look. Twenty-two ten eighty-seven. I better use this thing for something. Maybe a confessional of sorts will make me feel better about what I did. Here goes. Caroni. He never exactly was the ideal mercenary, but he worked well as a team. He was good at all the technical stuff, hacking terminals, getting through automated doors, disabling turrets, and me, well, I finished the job. 
It all changed, though, when we signed up for the Gunners. They were paying far more than we could make on our own, so it seemed like a no-brainer at the time. Little did I know what would happen when Caroni was forced to work with people other than myself. When I was assigned to my squad, it was like I'd known them for years. We worked well together and the guys respected me for my marksmanship. But Caroni was a different story. He always was an acquired taste, and his shyness frustrated Sarge. It was a mistake to shove a laser rifle into his hands when I knew that his best skills lay elsewhere. I thought when we took the vault, things would change, that he'd come out of his shell. Instead, the opposite happened. These damn pip boys, he's obsessed with them. He spends all his time in his room playing these games. I've tried to snap him out of it, tell him that Sarge is going to boot him out of the gunners, or worse, but he always rebuffs me. It's funny, I still beat him in these games, despite him playing them longer than I ever have. If I hear best of three one more time, I might snap. Maybe one day he'll shape up, but I can't wait that long. I've got to do something quickly. I owe him for saving my life. This vault is filled with chems, and it's not like they're going to miss a few shots of Psycho. Okay, our next destination is the Relay Tower. Just checking the area. There you can see the glowing sea, actually where the bomb dropped the closest to Boston. And there's our body. Another Vault 95 gunner and another Pip Boy to hack. Twenty-two ten I'm making a mission report here in case anybody comes across my body. If you're unable to identify me, I am Lieutenant Lazansky, Tech Specialist on Salvage Team 20. We managed to locate the wreckage. It's likely intact and survived the crash. That said, we underestimated the hostiles we would likely encounter on our mission, and as a result, two-thirds of the platoon is dead or MIA. It's likely I would have been right there with them if it wasn't for Caroni. I wasn't sure why the sergeant had picked the private to accompany us on the mission, but for a moment, I was glad he did. My good feeling was short-lived, however. Despite saving us, Caroni wouldn't respond to orders. The only time he made so much as a peep was when one of our fire team killed a hostile. Every time that happened, Caroni would look anxiously for another mutation to put down. We tried to tell him that every hostile he killed risked us being swarmed once more. He wouldn't listen. It was as if he was determined to get the most kills out of all of us. Did he think this was some kind of game? We didn't hold our position for long. Even Caroni didn't fancy his chance with the two death craws that flanked us. For once we agreed on something. We ran to a nearby cave and it appeared that the beasts had lost our scent. It was there we found some kind of pre-war weapon. Now, I had disassembled and reassembled a plasma rifle before, but this was nothing like I'd ever seen. We had to get this back to base, but first we had to get some rest. When I woke up, I discovered that not only were all of our Mentats gone, but Caroni was hunched over the weapon on a boulder, its constituent parts scattered across the rock face. At the time, even with death and almost certainty, I still couldn't let this promotion opportunity go. I tackled Caroni. He fought back. Once the fray started, the rest of the team jumped in, fighting over the weapon. 
The noise attracted what was left of the glowing sea's population to our position, and soon we were running for our lives once more. To say we weren't so lucky this time was an understatement. I watched the rest of us being torn apart. The weapon? It worked. Caroni fired it mindlessly into the storm. Its effectiveness is clear, but it wasn't enough. The last I saw of him, he was running into the sea, the ribbons of electricity from his weapon slowly growing tinier and tinier in the fog. I got away again. Most of me did, anyway. I'm going to try and use a transmitter to radio for help. But it's only a matter of time now. Okay, now there is not another quest marker, so let me go back and see what I missed. Listen to the gunner signal remnant. Okay, that'll be in the radio. And there we go, we just follow the audio signal. Man, I swear I can handle the large beasts and things, but the small targets, I really suck at it. I mean, man, those uh, little bloat flies are a pain in the butt. Let's change up a little bit of our stuff. Let's add some rat away and a few snacks. And the stim pack. There we go. Still getting used to when you use the hotkey on your D-pad, you have to, it just tells you what you're going to do and then you still have to push the A button to get it to work. So it's a two-step process that I'm still trying to relearn after spending a year or more away from this game. So let's go back to this signal remnant. And here are the remains of the other gunners. And we're getting closer to finding the weapon. Awful lot of rats around. Should get out of here. Oh. 
And of course I walked right past it. And we can download more Pip-Boy data. 221087. Mission accomplished. The aircraft is in pieces, but those pieces are intact. We are about to check inventory, see if we can carry some of this equipment back to Vault 95, until we saw a blue light in the fog. As it grew closer, we raised our weapons. I could hardly believe my eyes. It was that good-for-nothing Caroni. It didn't take long to guess why this coward survived. He had something hoisted over his shoulder, glowing brightly. Effer was going to give away our position. I told him to put it down. He didn't. I told him it was an order. He didn't respond. We drew our weapons again and I ordered once more. He stood there and I told my men to approach. As they surrounded him, some kind of lightning bolt shot from that thing, turned felt into ash. We covered the area in bullets, but when the smoke cleared, the son of a bitch was gone. He couldn't go one circuit without tripping over his shoelaces, but now he can disappear in a flash? We darted into the fuselage for cover and he came at us again. He didn't even take cover as he pursued us and took out two more of our men. I was as sure as dead. So I leapt at him and hit him squarely on the draw. He fell onto the floor of the cabin. What was left of us joined me in holding him down. We hated the fact that we needed him alive, but Command needed to know what happened out here. Otherwise, I would have shot the bastard myself. Bastard may have put up a good fight, but people like that, even with every advantage, they always lose. Finally, Caroni is dead, and we are the proud owners of this Tesla cannon. Excellent. Couldn't have said it better myself. Damage 119? Very nice. Best of three completed. But let's check him for any more Pip-Boy data. Twenty-three ten eighty-seven. Time for round two. Uh-oh. Who do you think actually won the war? Nobody, I guess. And there is the second Deathclaw in the distance. Let's equip this Tesla cannon and give it a test run.
And so concludes Best of Three, the quest for the Tesla Cannon. I actually like this one. It has a good weapon, too. Get our health back up. And it's time to say goodbye to the glowing sea. Thanks so very much for watching, and see you out in the world.